but we should be fine. Katie, your husband's walking around in his jocks behind. Can you just tell him to be careful? <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely not. We had a, a friend of ours had a, uh, she's a school teacher and she was teaching through the year her prep class and uh, they got a swimming pool and her husband actually decided to skinny dip, not realising she was on a, a Zoom <laughs> meeting with the kids. So they got a quick lecture in anatomy <laughs> and uh, straight to the top of the class. Uh, that's uh, that is, that's frightening is what it is. Uh, <laughs> Tess has joined us from Bass Coast too. Tess? Is on mute. All good. All good. So what we'll we'll start now, Rod. Um, yeah, we'll just work our way through, um, and yeah, we'll just uh, take questions at the end of each of the segments. We'll and as I said, we'll we'll go a little bit informal with this one, mate. Given um, given the small group, what we'll do is with the presentation, we'll we'll take you through um, the initial setup with with. Play HQ. So just making sure that all the fundamental information is right in, in terms of your setup. We'll go through the uh, registration process. We'll go through um, some, in, some um, areas around participants and the new communication tool that's within, uh, within the platform. We'll focus on that for this side of Christmas. Then post Christmas, so in, in February, March, when we return from leave, we'll then focus on the competition management side, team sheets, um, entering scores, results, live scoring, all those sort of um, magnificent things. So um, we'll go from there. In terms of um, some of the significant changes you'll, you'll notice is that the terminology is very different in Play HQ than what it was in um, Game Day or, or Sports TG. And I'd encourage you all to just familiarise yourself with those terminologies. Um, the Probably the, the most important ones really is around um, uh, Game Day and permits are, are now um, just simply, um, they're, they're called Game Day permits rather than Type 1 match day permits, um, the grade. Um, so we use the terminology grade now rather than um, uh, competition and uh, ladder points average, which only, um, which I don't think you guys do, Rod, in, in the female uh, competitions is, um, uh, is now uh, known as the percentage wins ladder. So it's, the terminology is different. It can get a little bit confusing, particularly when talking about grades and, and competitions versus um, what we're previously used to. But familiarise yourself with um, with that. The other one is um, selected players uh, is now known as lineup in uh, Play HQ. So there's a lot of Americanisms within the new within the new system. Um, just get yourself uh, familiarised with it and uh, keep yourselves out of problem out of trouble. We've uh, provided previously some information around the, the test site information. I, I would encourage you to use the test site to navigate your way around and familiarise yourself with the new system. Um, we have provided the user name and access. It, it is a lot of, um, it's exactly the, the system that's, uh, that's live, but you won't create any trouble, uh, problems if you do that. Um, our approach has been to ensure that only the club administrators that have attended a webinar have access, give access to the system. And the reason for that is to ensure that um, we're not fielding um, you know, 400 calls from the, from the various clubs uh, or team managers across the region on how to use the system. Um, the webinars which are uh, available at uh, the the uh, club help portal with the AFL are more than um, equipped to be able to help you through uh, your understanding um, of uh, Play HQ. Um, what I might do, Rod, is we might just go straight into the um, the actual portal itself, and this is the AFL Southeast. Um, 
Greg, are we able to use Red Hill women's as our guinea pig? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Red Hill women's. And we'll just go through what this looks like at the moment. Play HQ is still um, transitioning all the data from Sports TG or Game Day into Play HQ. The the enormity of the of the data transfer um, is significant and will take some time. So there will be elements that have been already transferred across, and there'll be other elements which will be due over the next uh, over the next couple of weeks. What you'll notice with the with the portal when you log in, you've got a menu that sits down the left hand um, left hand side of the screen, and with each of those menus, you'll also then have um, additional menus which will run left to right across the top of your screen. So within competitions, that clearly um, defines the the particular season that we're dealing with. Game day, um, which we will. Um, talk about in in the new year, specifically around game um, entering team sheets and so forth. Um, programs you won't need to uh, worry about too much. Participants is where you'll start to um, search and manage and curate your um, your players and and members. Transfers and permits will go through. Is, um, a bit later on, but this is where you'll um, particularly go in and, and manage all your um, your, your transfers and, and permits. Merchandise, uh, venues, um, reports. Uh, so venues will display all the venues across the country. We're waiting to uh, for sport uh, for Play HQ to to minimise that to to more local level. Uh, reports is where you will be able to run. Um, and generate reports on your database. So, for example, um, your financial um, your financial ones, your orders in terms of your merchandise, uh, your discipline reports in terms of um, reports and charges and so forth. Um, and then there is a history of your generated reports that will be curated in this um, in this part. But we'll we'll go through those a little bit further. What we will start with, however, is the uh, My Organisation uh, tab. And what this does is it gives you a, a bit of an indication of, um, of all the details around your, around your club. So um, you can upload your, your club logo. You can um, give a description. This is the information that not only appears in the back end, but can also uh, appear on the front end of your website. Um, if you have a club website, I encourage you to um, include that information here because that obviously then becomes um, crucial in, in terms of how people find you and find information. You can choose to make yourself visible on the discovery maps, which is an AFL um, uh, database. So if someone is searching for you on the play.afl um, search finder and puts in um, your postcode, that will then generate um, a club finder information, which you know people will be able to contact you, go to your website, um, register, all those sort of things. So you can choose to either have that hidden, and that's why this information is so critical to ensure that you've um, you've got all that added, uh, all that in information in there. In terms of um, this here, don't change anything within here. AFL community is the is the right uh, setting here. Um, all these other programs are, are, do not need to be ticked and, and shouldn't be ticked at all. So it's just simply AFL community. In terms of um, here, obviously you can um, select select the parameters that are relevant to your um, to your com uh, to your club. So, what ages are you um, registering for? So, obviously, in this case, we're um, sixteen, and sixteen, up. all the way up to uh, Rod's age. <laughs> There's three zeros. In it. There's three <laughs> numbers in there, Sean. Uh, so, clubs can um, can do that, and obviously. Um, in terms of the gender, um, 
politically correct, you can um, obviously choose the one that's uh, most relevant to uh, to your uh, to your club. Um, terms and conditions, you can choose to, in terms of your terms and conditions for your registrations, you can uh, create um, those as part of your, your registration. Your club abbreviation, so for example, um, you might be the, is it Red Legs up there, Greg? No, the girls are the Hillies. The Hillies. The Hillies. H I L L I E S. Yeah, that'll do it. There you go. Um, so once that, once you've completed all that, you can then um, uh, save an update. What we'll do is we'll just go again, moving across left to right in the menu, um, and add your club contacts uh, through here. Their position. All those positions have been um, have been now increased, Rod. So you've yep. got administrator, child safety, um, and if it, if you don't find a position that's covered within that drop down list, certainly add it there. Now this does not creating this contact information does not give people access to the database. It just simply um, lists them as a uh, as a club admin. Um, so just make sure that you. Um, have a distinct difference there. Vouchers. When setting up your registrations, you can obviously set up um, payment options for your club. So, um, which we'll start here. So, uh, Greg, in in your in in your sense, you can set up a um, a portal in which the payments will go to. So the, um, the merchant account, and you can set that up quite easily through through here um, and just making sure that you fill all of this information in as accurately as you can. Um, what you don't want to do is have any scenarios which uh, will hold up um, your uh, approval process. Um, the merchant is Stripe and the, um, the, the actual merchant um, cost is actually quite reasonable. It's um, below 2%, so um, much more cheaper than what was being offered under game day. Um, so that's actually quite a um, quite an easy way to collect your payments, and there are reports, as we showed before, which which allow you to um, you know, to report back on that so that your treasurer can reconcile um, those payments. But uh, once you've submitted that, then you're in a position to be able to collect payments um, through your registration process. So what I'll just do is just go back here. The vouchers, the voucher system is a way that you can um, control discounts. So, for example, if your membership, if the club membership is normally, let's say, $180, and um, however, if someone wants to register in the first, you know, if the club's offering a, a discount for those who register um, before um, January 31, then you can create a voucher which can be can be applied to your full member discount to your full member fee. Um, early bird voucher uh, voucher value is ten dollars. Um, I'm sure it would kill me if I am. Um, that's $180 voucher, right? Eh? Um, and I'll click accept. <laughs> and what we'll be able to do is if you want to make 850, you can make 10 vouchers. Um, and those will only be available to those who have the code to, um, to do that. You can activate and deactivate the uh, the voucher at any time. So that's the that's the purpose of the voucher, and that is applied to your registration fees. Um, Sean, so with the vouchers, yep. If, if you've got ten usages there, mm -hmm. as the clubs know, if they're down, if they use up the ten, if ten people have taken that up, does that reduce down to nine, eight every time somebody takes it up? Or is that have to be done manually? 
I think that you would run that through your report. It's a good question, Rod. Um, I don't think there's a tick down, but I think you just simply monitor it through the reports. Through, the finance, through, through your financial report. On Friday about it. Yes, yeah, spot on. We're still learning this too, guys, so it's all new to us as well. So we've got a meeting Friday with the one of the big knobs from um, um, Play <laughs> HQ. The big knobs. Big wig, sorry, from Play HQ. So we can answer those questions. But if you've got any questions, send them through and we can um, let him know that on, on Friday. Absolutely. Now, if in terms of adding a new admin, so at this point, um, there are no admins to to Red Hill at this point. So if you uh, if you are the administrator, uh, Greg, and you want to add another person to the administration of it, all you need to do is go to my organisation, admins, add new admin, and then you can add them there. Um, yep. The beauty of this is that it's easy to um, see what the access has been. So for example, let's, um, this will be interesting. We'll have a look at who has been accessing. <laughs> Hello. Sorry guys. Where's my histories? I'm using the wrong browser. That's what the problem is. There we are. Look at that. Oh, it's taking me to the wrong spot. I'll, we'll go back through that later. Um, all right, so is there any questions around the My Organisation and setting up the admins? I, I think just before we go on, Sean, I think Katie, um, I spoke to Bambi and he added you, he wanted you on as administrator. I think Tess, I think it was Ella there. Um, Ray, I'm not sure if Ty came back to me with a contact, but we can add that on. You can add that on. And, and Michael, which copy are you from, Michael? Uh, so, pretty cool. Sorry, Michael. Just had uh, Michael Tree. Just had guest on there. Um, I think. I'm not question. sure whether um, Brendan was on there or not, but he's a coach. But you can put whoever you like as an administrator. But a lot of clubs have elected not to as yet, like with AGMs and things coming up. So you don't want to have somebody on and then they're gone again in a week's time. Yeah. Okay. No worries. And the important thing there is when there are a changeover committee and the admins have changed it's really on incumbent on the clubs to ensure that those um uh, those members are uh removed um, from from the from the system we don't manage that from our end um that is certainly managed at a club end the what we found with um the play uh, sorry with sports tg is that there were people who were still listed as admin access who hadn't logged in for two or three years, but they still sat on the list. So if they wanted to, they could easily reaccess the um, the information. So really important to keep those um, up and up and about uh, up and updated, I should say. Um, any questions around that that organisation setup? We've we've gone through. Um, active users being able to add a new user to have a look at the access history. We've uh, gone through adding contacts, creating payment, your, your payment merchant portal, your vouchers, all that's um, covered off there. No further questions. We'll just move on to uh, permits. Just while you're asking that, Sean, does anyone actually um, get the girls to pay directly to the bank accounts or what? what Sean's setting up there, what you can set up. A lot of clubs just, you know, let them pay when they want to pay. But does anybody you or have you used those, um, that access before with the vouchers, et cetera? No, we just go bank account. Yeah. Yep. I've set a side question, sorry. Do we need to get working with children checks? Uh, uh, the if players you, or anything? Yeah, so if you, um, if you're, uh, club does have 
children who are under the age of 18. Um, there are positions within your club that are required to have a WWC under the AFL Victoria affiliation. And uh, that includes your coaches, it includes um, team managers, uh, team managers, presidents, um, runners. secretaries, runners, all those sort of um, all those sort of roles. So during the registration process, um, the WWC field is available. Um, and that needs to be filled out by the volunteer and the club needs to ensure that that is done at that um, by auditing the uh, the WWCs of their volunteers. Yeah, cool. Yep. All good? Very okay, good. so transfers and permits. So not that, and we'll go back over this in in uh, January, February, given that transfers don't open until February, but simply a new transfer request can be um, uh, can be activated by selecting um, the by completing this form essentially. But you won't be able to do anything with this form until transfers open on the first of Feb. But effectively, you'll be able to choose the league, type in the league, um, the competition in which they're um, coming from. I would say that's the organisation organisation they want to participate in and then you search the the players club in which they might be at so let's um let's transfer a player from Jimbrook my club um what do you reckon let's see if we can no it won't be on there <laughs> unless his kid's named uh Michael as well yeah true <laughs> Um, so then you, that's how you, you you would search for a for a particular player. And once that's activated, it's actually quite simple. Um, it's a lot more intuitive intuitive than what it was under um, Play HQ, but um, Play HQ under Game Day. So, um, but that's where that will sit there, and that's um, that should be fairly um, fairly straightforward. But we'll take you through that in a little bit more detail in um, uh, in the new year. Um, in addition, you can, um, in setting up your registration forms, and we'll, we'll go through that shortly, um, you can also set up um, your merchandise um, products. So things like jumpers, short socks, all those sort of things, if you wish to, to manage that through here, you can, uh, you can do so. And again, your merchant portal will allow um, your registrations to be, uh, sorry, your um, your product to be paid for by through that merchant portal. Um, and so what we might do is we might just go through merchandise, products. So if we want to add a product, let's say um, Red Hill Premiership <laughs> Jumper. Make that active. We can add uh, images if we wish. Um, we can uh, add variations to that. So, for example, if we want to add um, sizes. So, for example, let's say an XL and then Shawnee size and then Shawnee after Christmas. Um, and then, yeah, obviously you can um, add those extra um, uh, options over here. Then fulfillment, you can either have it as a delivery fulfillment or pick up from the club. And then obviously your merchandise person can can manage that um, from there. And you can also add additional custom fields uh, around that. Um, the You do have an order um, functionality where you can actually um, manage your orders, make sure that they've um, yeah tick them off as being um, as being collected and fulfilled. So that's uh, a fairly a fairly manual process. Some of our suppliers do have a, in my view, our suppliers have much better, um, such as like I have much better uh, fulfillment. Uh, programs in place rather than uh, through here, but it's there if you wish to to do if you wish to use it. The other thing is you might be able to, uh, for example, if you want to sell a membership um, packages as part of 
um, as part of your um, your offering during registration. That can obviously be added here. And again, all that is is um, 2022 membership. And then once that's created, you can then um, add the the value of the um, the membership. So they might want to purchase a, a polo or something for 20 bucks. If you do that online, it might be 20. If you buy it cash, it might be 35 or something like that. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So what would a Red Hill membership be worth, Greg? 120 oh. bucks. <laughs> and then yeah. Yeah. So that's how um, that's effectively that functionality. Um all good. All right. So the footy, any... Sean. Sorry, the the yep. Sharon still just through AFL Southeast portal. The clubs can't put the footies on there. Yeah, we'll um we'll confirm in terms of ordering um, match day footies and training footies. Um we'll send out some information hopefully by the end of the week, right, about how clubs can order those. But if clubs want to sell footies to their members, they're more than welcome to do it through this um through this process here. Footies should be pretty good to use. Again, they haven't used them for two years, the girls, so they should still be pretty shiny. Yeah, they should, they should be. They should be. All right. The most important part. So um, particularly around uh, registering players for, for next season. As you can see, we've got um, all of the previous seasons um, being brought into Sports TG. So if we go into, um, let's go into 2019, there's probably a lot more um, details there. Um, we should be able to find, uh, here we go. So we'll just use Natasha Armstrong as, a, as an example. Um, you can now go in and view that player's history. It's got... Um, all of uh, the details relating to that year. So date of birth, um, gender, uh, all of that sits in there, in here. And remembering too that this is all still being migrated, so not everything is uh, is necessarily going to be here. But you can see that you can see the details of the of the player, their address. Um, there's additional uh, information. Um, that would have come across from Sports TG. So, for example, um, you know, are they a Torres State Islander um, and descent? Um, in juniors, the name of the parent or guardian is also there, has come across. Emergency contact, if it's there, would also sit here. So this is a quick view of your participants. You can also download this same information in report and Excel format through the reports um, uh, menu, but uh, as I said, that report functionality is not available yet because the full data hasn't come across. And the games haven't gone across yet, sure. That uh, uh, let me just double check that, Rod. Unless it's under stats, maybe? Because it hadn't gone across a couple of weeks ago, maybe it has now. No, it doesn't look like it has. You can't yet. click on that, can you? No. no okay. So some of the clubs want to have, you know, stats on how many games the girls have played. Um, yeah, when that does migrate across, that'll say the individual that Tasha's played, you know, 30 games or whatever and and from when. No, it's spot on. So it's not on yet, is it? No, it doesn't look like it. But the, again, if you, so if you want to look at that from an individual point of view, you can certainly do that through, um, uh, through the participants, through participants in here. That makes sense. Oh, so it should still be on there. Go. To, can you go to participants? Yeah. So the participants in this, there's none registered in this season. So if you wanted to view someone from last year, yeah, you can. Yeah, as right. I said, you can put Does it that there. Give so. their that that still won't give their games, though, will it? Uh, no, I couldn't okay. find that games at this point. All right. Yeah. So. What it does say is that she was an active player in 2021, 22, 2020, 2019. Um, uh, this particular player played in the Victorian women's as a one-point player. So all the player points and stuff would come across if we're talking about senior footy. Yep. Um, Ray, if you just sort of mental note of that. All right. So 
what we wanted, what we're about to do is create um, your registration forms for um, for 2022. Um, and Rod has set up the um, the teams for um, for each of the clubs, so they should be sitting here. And at the moment, you're you're unallocated. So um, the grades, Division Two, Division Three, that will obviously come. Um, be sorted out once the competition's set up. Red Hill has one team um, in the in the women's space, and then we've got the participants. And let's now deal with the registration. So, what we want to do is set up a registration form in which your players can um, register. And so the registration period has been set. So this has been set at a, a global uh, level for us. Um, and a registration link is created, which will look like this when someone clicks on that link, either from a social media post or a, um, an email, however you choose to, to promote your, your registrations. But that's how this will look. So we'll come back to this screen uh, shortly. So what we want to do is create the... Um, in the first instance, we'll create the start date in which we want the registration periods to open for our club. So remembering that AFL Southeast or Rod has set the registration period for everybody, you can micromanage, if I can find that, you can micromanage the registration opening date for yourselves. So if Red Hill want to open their registrations on uh, in February next year, they can do so. And that can doesn't matter when it ends because um, you can still register um, past June 30. So you can do all that. You can add an age limit. There's no currently no nothing set because we haven't set that from the previous screen. Registration fees. Now, um, we don't, as an organisation, AFL Southeast does not charge registration fees, so you won't get anything from there, but um, participants will be charged a $1.80, I think it is, fee that um, helps fund this system. So um, any fees that are at registration, if your club doesn't charge any fees themselves, a dollar eighty will be charged to the to the player regardless. They'll have to pay they'll have to pay that before they finish registrations. Um, here you set your own registration fees, um, whether it be for a player, your volunteers, um, or your team manager. Um, these here come from basketball background, unfortunately, but um, you can, um, yeah. We just encourage that player registration fee to be taken there. Um, you can set um, advanced registration fees. So in a junior, probably more appropriate in the junior sense where um, you have different registrations uh, fees for each age group or for each uh, for different ages, um, that can be added here if you wish. You can also add custom fields to your registration form. Um, which, uh, for example, um, might be, um, you know, what in the in a junior environment it might be, you know, what is the um, main occupation of your father or something like that. Just gather information. Um, we've used that information to create a St Kilda Footy Club offer and a Melbourne Footy Club offer in the junior space. Um, your products. Well, we've spoken about that being able to set that up um, later. You can add your own additional information just to help your members understand what registration um, information might uh, might help them understand what they're registering for and whether it's going to be visible or not visible. So that's the participant to club. Once you've done that, which we might just go through that process, uh, Rod. Uh, So we're not quite the 1st of December yet, are we? 
Greg, just remind me that once we've done this, that we will um, we'll turn this off. Calculate the age of first of January. So, would you suggest, Sean, if Red Hill, for example, was one hundred and eighty dollars, that they put in one hundred and eighty-one dollars eighty to cover that dollar eighty? No, 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 because it will be charged separately. It will be charged separately. Okay. Yeah. No. So, the red. So, what they'll see when they when they register is a is a fee for a dollar eighty. And then the club fee, and if the league was charging a registration fee as well, that would be itemised. And then at checkout, they'll see that um, they'll see that full itemised account. Um, so uh, who? So you could go the other way and charge one hundred and seventy eight twenty, and then. It would so one hundred and seventy eight twenty plus a dollar eighty, and they'd only be charged the the one eighty. No, because the default the the dollar eighty is a default mm. charge from um, uh, from above, so that's going to appear there anyway. It doesn't matter where you. It's like using your credit card; you get that surcharge on there. I presume yeah. what you're saying. Well, I mean the 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 dollar eighty fee is just a is a nominal fee that goes to funding the 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 operation of this. Of Play HQ, the merchant fee is the fee that the um, Stripe would charge on the transaction, which is at one point. Well, I think it was one point eight percent. I'll have to double check that. Um, but that is on the total amount of the transaction. Does that make sense? Yeah. So maybe a note just in those comment fields that Sean was talking about, guy. Ladies and uh, gents, maybe just a note, just saying, you know, one hundred and eighty dollars is our fee, dollar eighty for the program, and you know, two dollars twenty for the credit card. If people want it, that explained, but that appears on your invoice anyway, Sean, doesn't it? Yeah, it would. Yeah, yeah. okay. On your statement. And you, and there might be some. Uh, encouraging encouragement for um, ladies to play. I think one year we had a granddaughter, a mum and a grandma all playing in the one team. So it might be, you know, if there's two members of your family, you might want to give a discount, uh, go back to those vouchers. You can offer a, a voucher to get grandma, mum and daughter playing in the team. That doesn't happen to men, Sean, does it? Uh, no. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Um, just to... Uh, just something that I've discovered there. Unless you've set up your merchant portal, you're not able to put in a fee there. It comes up with an error up the top. So now we're right. Um, so now we've set up a registration form, which now should appear here. Perfect. So if we wanted to get started with that on registering. Um, as a new dependent. So what this will do now is instead of creating a new record, because I am an existing Play HQ user um, and I may be a Play HQ user um, with basketball, netball, um, or I may be registered in another uh, football competition. If I'm registering a new member or dependent, it falls under my record doesn't create a new one, it just creates it under, under mine. And this is where um, I think this is a lot more intuitive. So participant details, we can add in, um, uh, I spell my name, Sean Jr. If there was such a preferred name, Uh, Registering for a female competition, sure. Do you only put half your age in, sure? <laughs> I will be. Cheaper fees. <laughs> uh, let's say that I was born in 1995, eh? 
All right. And then look, you go through, there are some compulsory fields within this form that um, would need to be completed. Um, and once you've done, once that person's done that, they can go save and continue. If there is anything missing, the, reg the registration won't be able to proceed past this point. Um, and so going back to the information where you can add the additional fields, that's where all this would appear. So if I just um, Oh, why not? Cranbourne East. And if they're previously registered, Sean, a lot of those details will already be populated. You just press like Cranbourne yeah. up or come Cranbourne East. So we'll, we'll go through we'll go through all of that. I can't do that. Um, yeah, we'll go through all that in a minute. But once the once they've done that, they'll then proceed through to through the checkout. Um, I won't do that as part of this demo. Um, I'll be the first person. I'll be playing for Red Hill next um, next season, Greg. Um, then they go into the fees, and then they'll go into a payment and summary. And as I said, that payment and summary will um, effectively be all the fees listed in an itemised um, in an itemised uh, way. Importantly, setting up your registration form is just really really important part of this process. Participation to club and team. Um, in the senior space, this is not necessary. It's a basketball functionality that probably doesn't need to be there, and the family member discount is not a functionality that will will go through right here and now. Player points is also something that's not required uh, within the women's space. So, um, when we, so I think that covers everything in that in that space, Rod. Yep. Have yeah, I missed no. anything from your end? No, I think everything is covered there. I mean, obviously the age limits, everybody knows, 1st of January, the girls have got to be 16 from the 1st of January. So they turn 16 in you know, February, March, April. It's it, They can't play in the women's. That's the only – everybody knows that, though. So, I mean, if we set the, those parameters up as 16, um, somebody comes to you in April and says going to play, they can't play that year. Uh, that's probably the only thing, Sean, we'd, if we can restrict that age. I know Sports TG, we used to be able to – Restrict it. Yeah, we, we can do that at our end. We can do that back end. Yeah, yeah, so we can do that for the clubs. No, that's fine. So just to... Well, sorry. Question yeah. on that. Um, we do sometimes get younger girls training, though, and I assume we still want them to register for insurance purposes. Are they, um, are they registered anywhere else? Um, probably some are, some aren't. Probably most are, yeah. Yeah, if, yeah if, they're, if they're registered as juniors test, they, they're covered. Yeah. It's um so yeah, if they, they come up and from Daleston or somewhere and come and train, as long as they're registered. If they're not yeah. registered, if they're only fifteen, they won't be able to train with you. But yeah. if they're fifteen and they're registered with you know their junior club, yeah, they can train. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um so just in the custom fields, um, we went through that a little bit earlier, but this is where you can actually manipulate the creation of the of the new field. So, as I said, if we wanted to um, capture the occupation, we can then text. You can also have drop down uh, boxes if you wish, and then that just would then populate within the registration form once it's. Um, and I'll, what I'll do. Um, we can let them know settings, profile, forms. We want it in participation to club, which is fine. To be there. Now, notice it's not letting me create it until I um, choose the option. Choose this. So, um, Spencer and the other option would be uh, photographer. Obviously, with a text field, that doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. Why is that not letting me do that, Rod? Yeah, it's not taking it. Can scroll up. Is there something you've missed further down? Doesn't look like it. No. All right. 
I'll have to have a look at that. See got that down for Friday as well. Yeah, absolutely. Custom fields. Yeah, don't know. But that's where you would, would add those. Okay. Um, so what we'll do there, Greg, is that, um, as we know, that this would sit, uh, if we just go back to... If we open up this registration form, remembering you can cut and paste that. See how that sits there, we can get started. If we turn this off and we go back to not opening it until January 1st and we save that. And then we went to this link that link there should now not be there, registration form unavailable. So it's as simple as that, turning it on and off, making it visible. Um, so that's your, your registrations. And if you just go back, Sean, it did say on the left there, opening soon, regos opening soon. So you, the clubs can see at that level that you haven't opened the regos. And all the player would see was that last slide that Sean showed. Yep, spot on. So I think probably the best way like for these the people who are on this tonight, Sean, would be to like test you go on and register yourself and and you know, just charge yourself a dollar eighty or whatever. Um, but then have a play with it that way. And if there's any anything there that doesn't work or you're not sure of before the players start doing it, you can come back to us and say, Well, I tried this and this didn't work and this didn't happen. Yeah. Um yeah, and, and you, you're probably likely to still be playing tests, a game here and there. So you register as a player, do your fee later on or whatever, but uh, at least try it that way and see if right. there are any dramas. So as I've said before, there are multiple ways in which a player can access the, the registration form once it becomes active and, and is created. Um, you can either cut and paste that link that we, we've just uh, spoken about. Um, it can be found um, through the... Um, the postcode search, as we've uh, mentioned before, or they may search it straight from uh, from a website. So um, either way, your participant has multiple ways of being able to uh, to register. Um, now my computer's just freezing at the moment. You still there, Rod? I am, mate. Um, yep, no, all good here. Beautiful. Now. What we what we understand is that um, with all the profiles coming across from Sports TG, there is a bit of a process in which the participants will need to go through that um, will through the registration process, and what they need to do is in the initial um, part is claim their profile um, that's come across from Sports TG. Now. Effectively, once they've gone through that process, it should pick it up. They'll, what they'll do is they'll click on register to, to register on the form. Um, it will identify through uh, first name, last name, date of birth, and obviously the club that they're registered with, that they've been previously registered in the in the system. And then that will take them through, um, through the, the claiming process. So they'll, they'll effectively claim their process. So if, if someone... Um, is wanting to transfer from Red Hill to um, to to Frankston um, Frankston Dolphins, then um, the system will then prompt them to say, "Well, you're um, currently registered at um, Red Hill, and you need to claim your profile before you before the transfer is enacted." Um, so this here, and we'll, we'll circulate this presentation afterwards, Rod. Um, yeah. But this here gives you um, a couple of scenarios in which players might experience through claiming their profile. Um, one of them will be obviously that they don't require uh, verification, and it's pretty pretty straightforward. They go through to, to registration um, profiles that require verification. Then there'll be a verify profile button that will be required to, to be um, selected. Then once the particular details are, um, uh, are verified, then they'll be able to claim their profile and either merge their, their current data 
I'm sorry, their previous data with their uh, current information and then they'll be able to, to register. Or there may be scenarios in which a player may not be able to claim their profile. So, for example, um, there might be a spelling mistake on their name. There might be the date of birth may have been incorrect in Sports TG. The email address may not um, be their current email address. Then there are support um, customer support um, mechanisms in which will enable them to um, to claim their profile and move forward with with registration. Um, customer support with Play HQ is um, and has been in my experience over the last um, three or four weeks has been outstanding. So I think that the um, there's no point in ringing the league. The league can't, from our point of view, we can't. Um, we can't change profiles. We can't um, uh, change email addresses or anything like, like that. That needs to be all done through through uh, customer support. So clubs will, clubs and participants will be well supported through uh, through any challenges with um, uh, with claiming profiles. And you might find, or you will find, a lot of girls coming out of. Underage footy to seniors, they've had their parents' email address. The kids forget what their parents are. The parents have changed their email, so that's what Sean's saying. We used to be able to help and look up old details, but uh, we can't do that anymore. So, uh, but customer support are very good. I've dealt with them a few times, and yeah, they're very good. Um, Rod, my screen is not telling me that I'm sharing. What can you see on your screen at the moment? Um, registrations opening soon for Red Hill. Let me just see if I can. Now we're back to just everybody now. Southeast Women's 2022 registrations. Yep. Transfers open Feb 1, 2022. Perfect. Perfect. The uh, computer was having a bit of a hissy fit then. So, what we've, as we've already communicated, um, in order to help clubs get um, Play HQ set up, transfers, which normally open on November 1, have been delayed till February. Um, to ensure that uh, Play HQ is um, is up and running at club level first before we start dealing with hundreds of um, of transfers, um, and once that does happen, that and again, customer support will be able to help um, participants through uh, any issues they have with um, you know, with their registrations. Now, under the old Play uh, under Sports T T G, there was a, a communicator. Um, a really clunky communication tool that was um, that was used. Um, the Play HQ solution to that is a Mailchimp um, account which integrates with um, Play HQ. It's it's um, fairly fairly simple. Most clubs will be able to get away with a free Mailchimp account, which will be able to deal with two thousand contacts. So. Um, in most cases, most clubs will be able to do that. There is um, there is a discount code for those who wish to use the more um, funky uh, features of Mailchimp, um, which there's a monthly subscription charge. Um, and uh, I think Rod, um, you should have the discount code, which is uh, which is available there. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, integration process, and uh, we'll send you that information. I won't bore you with that um, there at the moment. Really important to understand that um, there is much support through this um, through Play HQ. It's probably the most supported program within um, the AFL at the moment, um, given its its broad um, rollout across the country. Um, so this. This here is the user guide for uh, for all the clubs. Um, right, if you haven't distributed that to the clubs already, that should be done um, along, yeah, with, this, along that, with this presentation. That's been done, mate. It's all been sent, but we can send it again. That's okay. Perfect. Um, and as I said, the um, the AFL um, Club Help web, website um, is an outstanding uh, resource in which clubs can um, gather information, not only about Play HQ, but... Um, AFL. Has anyone gone onto the AFL Club Help website? Now my, web, now my keyboard's not working. 
Oh, good on you. You're back today, AFL South East fixtures and ladders. It's working well, though, the computer to, tonight. Mm. It's that new Omnicorp um, virus, mate. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, the AFL um, club help yeah, page is certainly, um, certainly there. To, to assist all clubs. But, uh, Rod, that's a very quick run-through on, on Play HQ. Um, comfortable for you to manage the integration of um, of club admins into uh, uh, access of uh, Play HQ as, um, as you feel comfortable with um, the administrator's um, knowledge of uh, the system. Yeah, and I think most of them are on. Ray just sent me a message then, so I'll add Ray on tonight and then he can work out who he wants to, to put on there. But uh, there were a couple that is, were still waiting, uh, which haven't come back to us who they want as their administrator, and that, I think with the AGMs coming up. But, yeah, just give me a call, guys, and we can add add somebody on that you want. Um, Katie, you were on. Tess, I think it was Ella that was on. Um, Greg, yeah, well, we didn't have anybody there, but if you were happy to be on there, if we can put you on there as the as the main one, and and same with Michael, just uh, we can check to see who's there. But um, yeah, we're learning this as well. We've got some more meetings on Friday, so if you've got any questions between now and then, uh, especially like like Tess and Katie, maybe if you are playing, go in and register, and that's probably going to be the best way because until someone registers, we don't know whether it's going to work or functions aren't working there. So that would be good if you you two could either have a have a go at that and let us know if there are any dramas by Friday. Absolutely, I found good. that website. So thanks for your time, everybody. I found that website, Rod. Oh, you got it. There it is. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Club Help, um, it's got the Play HQ uh, information there. The the real good thing for you guys to uh, keep an eye on is uh, the webinars, um, the club. Club admins, the next lot, um, there's none in December, but they kick up again on uh, late uh, late January um, around season setup and so forth. And then there'll be some game day uh, webinars later on in um, in January, February. So certainly check those out. Um, there's also, in addition to Play HQ resources, resources there's uh, information around how um, clubs can uh, go around recruitment. Um, there's coaching. There's uh, some information around female-friendly fa facilities and the preferred facilities guide, particularly leading into a um, an election cycle. This this kind of information is is going to be critical to um, lobbying council and and also your local MPs. But um, this is an incredible resource that uh, clubs should. Um, uh, should be looking at includes information around planning structures of uh, committees financial management templates um, how to rec um, some tools around uh, recruitment of volunteers um, all those sort of things are, are all um, are all in here so uh, for example position descriptions for um, uh, you know for volunteer roles there's uh, meeting agenda templates um, so based on best practice in community sport. Um, so all of this uh, is available to you. Um, so just uh, have a look through that. And I've just sent the link through uh, through the chat, Rod. So um, you can include that in your next communication. Yeah, we'll do. Thanks, Sean. Any questions? Um, I'm not sure about other clubs, but certainly with our girls, they're encouraged to find a, a you know, a sponsor for their registration and over and ab above that. So, you know, say the registration is 180, but uh, they they get the business to sponsor them for an additional, you know, 200. So, three 380 in total. How? It, and it's the business that's pay, you know, paying the registration and the sponsorship for that player. I don't, I, I can't see how that would fit into the registration on on Play HQ here. Um, it would probably need to be a separate transaction, I would think, Greg. Uh, I agree with you. I'm not sure 
that even as a product that that would fit um, yeah. fit there, particularly during the registration process. But um, what I will do is we'll have a chat on Friday, Rod, about how the product can be set up and then accessed by non-members. So, um, so what you might be able to do is set up a sponsorship product in in the merchandise area, which yep. then the can be purchased by the particular sponsor, and the yep. player may just simply direct the sponsor to um, to that process to that hyperlink to purchase that product. But yeah, um, yep. that might be the best way to do it because not all of them will have sponsors, will they, Greg? No, not all of them do, but you know. Uh, Sometimes, you know, parents or parents' companies or uh, the companies that they work for, you know, they're they're in, encouraged to um, to to get sponsorship. And I just didn't see how that would work in registration. But as you said, if you if we make it a product and then we can link it, then uh, then that does that job there. Yeah. yeah. No, great. Okay. Well, bro, we'll raise that on Friday for you, mate. Mm-hmm. Cool. Take it note. Any other questions? Yeah, with the um with the transfer, is it still required to have a hard copy form that needs to be signed, or is that now past us? Uh, that's past us. Yeah, right. Michael. So um, everything will be will be done via um, the electronic um, method. So and and initiated by the by the participant themselves. Sure. Yeah, well, so we still need easy. paper. Sorry, Michael. No, that's right. No, that's good. That makes it easy. Yeah. So if if I'm if I'm the player that wants to transfer, gonna say... yeah, go right. Uh, sorry, I was just going to say with the, uh, the agreements, the underage agreement, Sean, we still have to set them up manually between the leagues, like FDJ to us and Saturday's Juniors to us. Or can we put that on there as well? Because we we normally have send that out to the clubs to if they need to use those underage permits? Uh, the interchange agreements, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah. I think they'll work the same way, Rod. It'll be initiated by the by the participant. Okay. But we'll uh, verify that on Friday. Okay. Perfect. And Sean, All good. Without, um, I know obviously we're, we're focused on the women's comp here, but who would be the point of contact to register me as an admin for the senior men as well? Um, Hayden, Hayden O'Connor. Okay, great. Thank you. And Greg, I'm happy, good. To, do Everyone that. happy to do that with, for you, Greg, once you're um, after this meeting, if you like, just stay on and I'll, um, we'll add you as we as we're on yep sounds good yeah I'd, I'd love to have a play around with it as you said and look at and look for bugs and that kind of thing and because the girls are going to have questions for us as the administrators so uh yeah, if we can play around with it and have some experience with it then that would be fantastic no worries. and the offer is open to you too michael if you if you want to just stay on we can do that straight away yeah that'd be great thanks all right, I'm happy with that, right? If there's no other questions. No, so all good, Sean. To... Thanks for that. So thanks, Sean, for your time. Thank no, you. No dramas. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you all. And um, yeah, we'll we'll follow up a few of those questions on Friday. And um, yeah, good luck. Yell out if you find any <laughs> bugs. Good Thank luck. you. Have a great night, everyone. See ya. Good on you guys. See ya. My battery's See going, Sean.